Welcome to Python Coding. This is a series of videos that are for anyone interested in creating their own XBMC or Kodi add-ons. Now what we're going to be doing is getting a group of individuals, this may change from week to week depending on who's available, and we'll be uh, going through various different um, add-on functions and um, basic coding templates and things like that and, um, and eventually creating um, an add-on. We're not quite sure where that's going to end up yet. It'll be uh, a group, uh, group input and uh, we'll see, see exactly where that takes us. But in this episode here, episode one, we've got um, coding terminology and add-on anatomy. So this is really based at the very, very basic uh, wannabe coders. So if you've got no previous coding experience, this will be perfect for you. Uh, it, and as stated there on the, on the uh, video there, it says, today's episode explains the basic terminology used. Find out what the difference is between a variable, a module, and a function. We also delve into the add-on XML and create our very first basic add-on. And um, uh, just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I'll be hosting this, but we have got uh, a very, very varied group of individuals that will join us. Uh, we've got some uh, coders that are interested in joining, and we've got some... Um, new uh, fresh people that um, that have never done coding before in their life and uh, and that's uh, that's the group we've got today and myself uh, I you may know me as WHUFC Lee I created um, the Total XBMC website which is now Noobs and Nerds and um, and have created uh, various different add-ons that I'm sure you may may or may not have seen um, Total Installer Community Portal um, the security shields there's been various different ones and um, yeah that's about it and I've got uh, 10 years experience with Kodi I've, I've been using XBMC since uh, back in the day when I used it on an Xbox in uh, 2006 or 2007 I think I started so um, yeah I don't claim to be an expert coder by no stretch of the imagination and I hope that we can all learn something from this Okay, let's uh, move on and get on with um, actually learning some code. Now before we get started, there's a couple of things in your system that you may need to change. And also, uh, we're going to be using the Sublime text editor. So have a little Google for Sublime text editor. It's uh, Sublime 3 we're currently using. It's free to download and it's a brilliant text editor. So uh, please, um, I would highly recommend uh, using that so we're all on the same page and also you may want to sign up for free at Code Academy although we're not going to be using it in this particular uh, lesson we will be in future ones so um, yeah well worth uh, signing up at Code Academy and um, making a start on the Python course and as I say at some point in the future we will be referring to that and uh, transferring what we've learned there into our new add-on Okay, so let's have a look at what we need to change in our Windows system here. Uh, this is based on Windows 7. Uh, you can obviously change this in whichever version of Windows you're in, but um, it may vary very slightly. So what you need to do is go to the Organize section at the top here and Folder and Search Options. So if you're using a newer version of Windows, I'm sure you could probably just search in the Windows search bar for folder and search options, uh, that phrase, and I would imagine it comes up. In here, we've got a view tab at the top there. Click on that, and by default, that one is ticked, hide extensions for known file types. So untick that, uh, OK that, and you can see we've now got the file extension at the end um, so we, we're going to need that for this this particular section because we are going to need to edit the extension on the end and let's just do a quick new document so we do new text document and so I just right clicked on the uh, anywhere on the screen there anywhere on the white part of the screen new text document and let's just call this uh, 
default.py. So the py says to the system that that's a Python file. Okay, so click OK. It says, are you sure you want to change the extension basically? Because uh, it was text and now we're just changing it to Python. Uh, so yes, we're quite sure. Now this next thing you're going to want to do, well more than likely going to want to do, is by default your text editor um, may not be picking up Python files. In my case here I can see that actually it is being picked up by Sublime, you can see in the bottom left corner. Uh, we can just about make out that icon. Um, it's a Sublime icon, but if you right click on that, right click on any PY file and do open with okay you can see I've got sublime in the list but you may not have that in the list uh, I've got that in the list because I've already chose that so just go to choose default program and if you click on browse so you can see it on the on the list up there as I say you may not have that if you've not already set it up for for Python files uh, click on browse and it just take you to your program files. So go down to where it says um, Sublime Text 3. And we want that one there, Sublime Text.exe. So we're highlighting that one on this page. Um, always use this program for this kind of file. Click OK. And there you go. So what happens now is every time you click on a .py file, it will open in the Sublime Text Editor. So, all right, let's 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 start off before we crack in on the um, Code Academy with variables, statements, functions, and modules. Just very briefly explain uh, what they are. So you could actually all copy this, to be fair. Um, if you go to percent app data and then the percent sign, can you see that? Yeah, we're going to go into Kodi. Excellent. So we go into Kodi and go into add ons. And what we do is we just create a new folder and we call this test. Uh, oh, no, we won't. Sorry. We call it uh, plugin dot video.test all good so open that folder and now we just need to create a new file so if you right click somewhere on that screen and do new and you want a text document and then it should come up with new text document .txt. So just delete all that, and we want to call this default .py. Yep. And it'll ask if you want to change it, the extension. Um, just click yes. So what that means is we've we've now got a Python file. <laughs> right, so let's go through very quickly uh, the difference between variables, statements, functions and modules. Um, it may sound a little confusing, it's, it's really not. Once you get the hang of it, it's dead, dead simple. So when, when you're um, creating a new Python file, what you're going to need to do is at the very top you're going to have some imports. So if we type in import um, now this is going to be our modules that we're going to import. Now modules can contain lots of different functions that we can use. Um, it could be for sort of uh, renaming files or or uh, hooking into uh, web addresses, things like that. But what we're going to do in this case is just import XBMC. Oops, XBMC. So we do that. Um, XBMC has its own library of modules basically so we need to import that and that has loads of good stuff you'll find it all on the wiki page which we're linked to in a while okay it appears that Houdin is having some issues with his text editor um, it's not actually coming up in different colors like it is on shown on this screen here so 
Uh, thanks to Shan, uh, we've um, she's found a solution for that. So what we have to do is go up to up to view, and then in here. Um, where are we? Somewhere in here. Oh, the system. Yeah, move move over to the right, and come down and make sure t Python is ticked. Um, yeah, once that's ticked, it's all going to be good. Well done, Shan. <laughs> Woo. Well done. So, right back to the uh, imports. So that's a module. So it, XBMC is. Uh, a uh, module that we can import and that has loads and loads of different functions inside it. Uh, another one that we can import is and we're probably going to need is XBMC GUI. Now you can either do it on the same line with a comma um, like I've done on one so I've done that on my screen there. So you can add as many modules on the same line as you want um, or it's just up to you know, however you prefer your writing style, or you may want to do it on a separate line just below and do import XBMC GUI. Um, that's it. If you go one above the other, you've always got to have import. If you're on the same line, yep, yeah, I thought you might. I thought you might. Yeah. Um, what <laughs> what a lot of people do is put the XBMC ones on one line. And then they put, uh, you know, like uh, web-based ones on another line, and try and categorise them like that. Um, but yeah, it's just just up to your writing style. So if we do import XBMC and XBMC GUI on the top line, and then on the line below that, we'll also do import. Uh, what's a good one to use? Uh, OS. We're probably going to need OS. Um, so OS allows you to use operating system commands. So it, uh, it allows you to hook into your Windows operating system commands or Linux or whatever system you're using and use sort of uh, rename files, delete files, that kind of thing. Okay, so makes sense? Yeah. Marvellous. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so so after your imports, what you might want to do is um, if you use the little hash key, uh, that acts as a, a comment. So if you put that at the start of any line, it will comment out that line and the code will not read that. So you can type in any gibberish you want there. Um, but uh, hold on, uh, the Canadians in the group here are trying to tell me that a hash is actually a pound. Um, that's the first I've heard of that, so that could get confusing. Okay, if you're in Canada or somewhere where they don't call hashtag hashtag, if I mention hash, I'm on about a pound and, and not the exotic uh, substance you can buy in Amsterdam. Okay, <laughs> right, moving on. So if you put that at the start of a line, so I've got it on line four here, and I'm just going to write in here um, global variables um, so it's good it's good to always comment your work wherever you can just keeps it nice and neat so we know that the next little section we're going to do is going to be our um, global variables okay so on line number five as a little test uh, we go through an example of a variable so let's do something like uh, we do Roni equals one the number one so no quotations around that just the number one because you can have uh, variables as whatever you like really they can be lists they can be integers which uh, one is in this case uh, a number or they can be strings many many different things you can have as a, a variable but we keep it nice and simple so we have that one as a number and we'll have shan equals um, we'll we do <laughs> we do shan equals two, uh, but in in uh, in what you call it uh, in 
thing is. <laughs> what are they called? Quotation marks. Yeah, thank you. So TWO. Right, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, so we've got Browning equals 1, as in the number 1, then Shan equals quotation marks TWO. Uh, and when you're using quotation marks, you can use double or single. doesn't make any difference at all. Uh, so long as you always close it with the same as you opened with. Okay. Um, in fact, whilst we're on that subject, I'll just quickly do another example. Let's do ARB equals... Uh, let, <laughs> I'll cut that for anyone at home. Uh, nobody at home watching this needs to know what you think of ARB Baroni. So if we do uh, if we do a single quotation mark, ARB equals single quotation marks, and we're put in, um, I don't know. Right. If we try writing three T H R W E and then apostrophe S. You'll notice that it just doesn't look quite right. Yep. What that's saying to us is the yellow, so the three, we've enclosed that in some uh, quotation marks, which is great. So it knows that three is a variable, but then it's moving on to the next thing. It thinks that's the end of what we're trying to tell it. So if we want to use a quotation mark in, in that string, the best way to get around that is use double quotation marks at the front at the start and then double quotation marks at the end right um, Shan just asked about uh, escape characters so uh, she's been using Code Academy started on that and um, you can use a backslash so we're going to that as well um, and we'll also show another example of how you can how you can use this in in reverse with uh, single and uh, double quotations. Okay, if we do Houdin, oops, Houdin equals uh, we. If we do, um, if we wanted to put in there, I don't know something in quotes. Uh, he says. Hi guys. Right now, you can see I've used double quotations in the middle, um, so that so I've done it backwards. So what whatever you need to use, just open it and close it with the opposite of what you want to use in the middle. Yeah. Um, there are occasions when you need to use both, and and that's when the other method comes in handy, Shan, that you mentioned. So you can do Lee equals. Oops, not minus Lee equals. Um, so I just open it with a single quotation, and if I do um, what what's all this? about right so I've written what's all this about uh, this being in double quotation and what's with an apostrophe just before the s and you can see it's it's completely out of whack yeah the s is in white the all is in blue um, and the reason for that is because obviously we've closed closed it and then we've opened another one um, and this is where we can use an escape character so the backslash which is on the bottom left of your keyboard next to the shift ah yeah you foreigners it might be on the right sorry yeah uh, okay but yeah not to be confused with the normal uh, normal slash uh, this is this is like the I think it's backslash in it is that right yeah yeah it is backslash yep so put that before the s um, and then it's all good. Um, yep, it's brilliant. And then you'd also find if we change that, so at the start of the line we used double quotations, at the end we used double quotations, we would we would then need to use it on, on the double quotations around this, 
and and that's fine as well that's fixed it it is a lot of extra work it's a lot of hassle um but you know plenty plenty of different ways you can use it personally i find uh that first way we used you know the the quotations and then just check you know opposites in the middle that's fine yep now i suppose really before moving on i ought to say that is what i've done here is really badly presented um so where i've got baroni equals one shan equals two it should all be looking nice and um, even on the page so uh, if we go up to Baroni equals one just go to the equals and press the tab and then do the same at Shan you might need to press it a couple of times just do it on all of those until they line up and then when you're reading your code later on it just makes it a real lot easier to work out what's going on yeah that's <laughs> that's that's something and not a lot of uh, Cody devs do these days so um, yeah well worth getting into that habit right so <laughs> so does um, does everyone sort of understand what those global variables do as Shan just correctly pointed out we've assigned different values to different items uh, variables and we can use those in our code later on so we've told it that you know Baroni is one and blah 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 um, we can now use use those words to print something so let's say for example um, well here we go we're, we're moving on to the print function now so we could do in here print and then you yeah, uh, quotation marks again single or double shouldn't matter um, do you know what in actual fact we don't need those sorry we just need print and we do sham and what that would then do is if he was not using normal Python or an older version of Kodi that would print in your Kodi log um, it would print the word two TWO because Shan equals two. Make sense? Yep, brilliant. Unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, not really unfortunately, but it's kind of unfortunate because uh, it's going to mess up our Code Academy uh, lessons very slightly because they use print quite a lot. In Kodi, print no longer works. Um, so what you have to do is use the XBMC dot log and then open brackets and then you just type in whatever you want so we want shan I'll just make this a bit bigger so you guys can see it better is that better yeah okay uh, so does that make sense so what we what we're actually do that's it xbmc dot log yeah, and that will work on older versions and newer versions. It's been there. Um, it was, um, I think it was as of Jarvis. Yeah, I think it was as of, as of Jarvis. I think they upgraded to Python 2.7.8 or something. Um, and yeah, the, the Python's basically changed very slightly. Uh, so it, it won't error if you've got print in there. So old add-ons, they've coded it up so that it won't error. Um, but it just doesn't actually do anything um, now I suppose that brings us on to our final thing actually what we've typed there is modules now anything with a dot in it so a full stop or period as you uh, foreigners like to call it so you see there on that line 11 I've got mine xbmc dot so that means we're calling the module xbmc so you can see on, on the on that line number one we imported XBMC yep we're actually now calling that we're saying you know what we want a function that exists in XBMC in the XBMC module so you just write XBMC dot followed by whatever function it is that you need in this case it's log All right Shannon just made a, a good point there about um, is there somewhere we can go to find out what 
resources are available to use, which uh, functions are available. So I'll just quickly uh, show you. I right, go to noobsandnerds.com and then in the forum drop down, you'll see a development section. And in here, we've got add on development. If you click on there, you'll find there's some really useful stuff in there. Um, the sticky sections. Uh, this one in particular, the full list of all Kodi command resources, is very useful. I'm finding myself, uh, you know, going back to that many, many times over and over again. And if you go in there, it's it's pretty much got every every link that you could need to help you out with your um, with your coding, finding out what what functions you can use. So you've got the wiki, the list of built-in uh, functions, and you've also got um, the P, uh, PY docs, Kodi PY docs, which is special uh, Kodi Python documentation stuff that you can use in your code. Uh, but we, we go on to that more in the future as uh, you know, some of that is uh, quite more advanced. But uh, yeah, back to the code for now. So if you want to save that now, Now just purely for quickness, uh, I'm going to find an add-on XML file from an existing add-on and uh, we're just going to convert that into one that works with our code here uh, so that we can run it and see what happens. Now we will go into the add-on XML part in the next guide uh, in more details but uh, for now just for a quick win so we can see exactly uh, what this code is doing, uh, we'll we're just quickly edit one. As you can see here, I've got the plugin video Crackler add-on that I just got from the Kodi repo. Uh, it's a nice basic add-on XML, easy to understand. Some of them can be quite uh, confusing because they've got a lot of different uh, country uh, languages, should I say. Uh, they've got uh, different sections for different languages, um, you know, and it can be a little bit confusing. So this is a nice simple one. That very top line there is the XML encoding. So every XML is going to have that. That's not going to change, or not going to change anytime soon at least. Now, this next section, the add on, uh, sometimes you may see this section, the ID, name, version, provider name, all on one line. It doesn't really matter if it's online, one line, or, or set out nicely like that. The ID, now this is your unique ID for your uh, video add on. Now, if you remember rightly, we called our folder plugin video test. So we just want to uh, copy that. Um, so we changed Crackler to plugin video test. So ID, it's very good practice to make sure that your ID matches your folder name. Although strictly speaking, you don't have to. Um, Cody will work with a different folder name it does get very confusing. So always try and keep it to the same name and also try and make sure that you always use lowercase. Um, don't use capital letters in it if you can help it. Capital letters will work, but you're gonna, you may, well, especially if you end up doing any skinning work in it, uh, there's some special conditional visibility type things that you can use and they really don't work well with um, any uppercase letters. So best, practice is always keep it lowercase and don't use any spaces in there either you can use uh, you can use things like that or underscore whatever you want but or dots but um, no spaces and uh, no special characters as well the name now the name can be whatever you want it to be called uh, really doesn't matter so I'm just going to call it test and version it's good practice to get into for your test test versions, um, so prior to public release, you'd do something like 0.0.1. Um, so you have, uh, yeah, you'd have something like that, and then once you bump up a, you know, a significant type of version, uh, you'd probably move that second zero to a one, and then once you're ready for actual release, public release you would change it to 1.0 or 1.0.0. Um, yeah, so a major, major release would be the first first one. So if it's a huge, major uh, 
thing that you're doing if you're on already on version one and you want to go to version two um, that would generally sig signify that you're you're doing a huge change huge change if it's just a small change you'd, you'd change this one here but you know it's your call um, that's just you know what most most devs seem to do uh, okay so as it's test we're going to leave it as what 0 point 0.1 and provide a name again that can be whatever you want so I'm just going to put WHRC Lee if there was multiple authors working on this you could uh, comma separate them so you could do uh, diesel Baroni etc okay so I'm just going to leave it as that the um, we're going to go over all these bits in another guide, so I'm not really going to go through all those, but let's just say that they are all fine. Um, the import there, the import script common plugin cache, I don't actually need that in this one. Um, the developer has basically said, uh, look, there's a script module that I want, script common plugin cache it's called. Um, can you download that Cody um, when you install this add-on from my repo repository? So Cody would look at this file, it sees what's in import and it's seeing that script common plugin cache and it's saying right okay we know we've got to download that because this needs it. R1 doesn't need that so I'm just going to delete that. The XBMC Python you always need that in there, always. Uh, that just tells Cody uh, what version of Cody it's, uh, it's compatible with. Okay, the extension here we go. So we're going to leave it as video, and then, like I say, we're going to all these at a further date. Um, we're going to leave it as video, so we, that means it just appear in the video add ons. And summary you know, when you look at Kodi, let's say you're in the Confluence skin, the standard skin, with, if you're looking at your video or program add ons or whatever on the right hand side you'll quite often see a description uh, you'll see like an icon and the description depending on which view type you're in but if you're in like info list or something or whatever it's called big list maybe no, info list I think it's called um, it gives you a little description so the summary is the heading basically so we can call that test add-on and then the description would be obviously the description that appears underneath that heading so this is my test add-on uh, platform yep we're gonna have this as working on every platform available language we yep we keep that as English and you've got your license in there which most people use the um, GNU general public license uh, v2 which is um, the GPL okay so that looks good. Uh, so the, the only really important ones we've got here for this particular test is that you've got the ID right, you've got your name, version number, and you provide a name. And uh, and we want to make sure that it's a video provides video. Okay. Oh, and also actually before I move on, just in case you do use a different one, uh, library equals default py there on line ten that is telling Cody what file we want to open uh, when we try and run the add-on so you know we called that file default PY um, that means this also needs to be called default PY if we called that file add-on.py some people do use that um, we would change this to add-on add -on PY and then when you run the add-on it knows that's the code that it needs to be running Okay, so we we save this. So just save that as um, save that as the um, I'm actually doing this on a different machine, so uh, I've got to recreate the folder. Plugin video test. Uh, so just save it as an add-on XML in plugin video test in your add-ons. Okay, right, and that's that. And if we load up Cody now, you should be able to see that you've got your test add-on there. So if you, so if you look at that default diesel, have a look at your default PY, right? 
so that's that's what we were actually loading up that that is the add-on basically that's that's what we've told it to open so what we've actually told it to do there is print sham to the log so it should be printing two so if you can open up your log you should be able to see hopefully okay um shan's shan saying that hers is erroring so before moving on let's have a little look at the log because logs are really really useful honestly they're so so useful you'll end up using them all the time um making an error is actually a good thing it, it teaches you um well it it actually gets you to used to you know what the code does um so uh yeah you're, you're going to get plenty of errors i shouldn't worry about that so let's have a look at shan's log and see if we can see what's wrong with it yeah xmbc it's around the wrong way <laughs> Do you, do you know what? That is such a common error. Right, so that appears to be fixed now, and I think everyone else is now sorted as well. They're all seeing two, the word two in their log. So uh, let's have a quick look at someone's log, if we can, just to prove um, that that is working so people at home can see what they're looking for. Okay, if you can all see that at home, um, it's quite small, but hopefully you can make that out. Just there, the third line from the bottom says notice, and then you've got the word two, T-W-O. So that proves that our bit of code actually works. Um, it's printed the word two to the log. Not the most outstanding add-on in the world, I know, but um, hopefully that's that's got you started with um, the basics of how it all works. and before we finish I'll just quickly show you um, another useful little tip when um, when error checking and printing to the log in this default PY here anyway you see that yeah where we've got the log if we put in there um, a couple of thingies uh, quotation marks just before Shan and then in those quotation marks just stick a load of pounds as you foreigners call them yeah hash hash things stick whatever you like in there but i i find them really useful um just add a little space after it oh so so you have a load of those uh, hashes space and then close the little quotation mark and if you put plus just before shan that's telling it to print whatever you've got in there so that all those hashes space and then the word two so if you try so if, yeah so if you try if you save that and then try it you'll find when you look at the log it's much much easier to find what you've printed in there okay well that's it for this lesson uh, make sure you join us next week where we'll be working with statements and creating our own functions um, so we'll be delving much more into the actual uh, coding side of things next week and uh, if you do have any questions please do use the noobs and nerds forum where the team will be more than happy to help um, if you have any questions I'm I'm always on there uh, every day so uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have if you leave any comments on YouTube I'm afraid I don't check the comments very often you are much better off going straight to the noobs and nerds forum and uh, where you'll be answered very very quickly as opposed to possibly days or weeks okay thanks for watching and hope to see you soon